Eddie Wu. Welcome to the year that made me. Thanks for having me, Liz. I have to say, maths was never a great love of mine. I was never very good at it. And so I'm intrigued to hear that, you know, you too were in that category once upon a time, although you managed to turn that around. Um, And we'll come to that later. But I want to go right back to the beginning because you had a really difficult time at school. You didn't like school for a long time. And it wasn't because of your hatred of maths at the time. (laughs) No. So, So tell us about that. I was what you would call a school refuser. So this is the kind of kid who has a terrible pattern of attendance. There's nothing to do with illness or any other kind of, you know, family turmoil that results in that just for whatever reason. There's an emotional and it can be a physical barrier to being present at school and being in that environment. And a large reason for that was that when I was growing up, uh, particularly in early primary, um, I was I was quite severely bullied at school. And it was sort of a function of the fact that I didn't look like many of the people who I went to school with, you know, um, born and raised in suburban Sydney, Northwest Sydney. Um, And it was, you know, back in the days when even in a political climate, there was kind of this cynicism and this uh, anxiety around around Asians and what what they kind of represented. My response was just, I don't want to go. I don't want to... I don't want to be spoken to like that or treated like that or I don't want to be beaten up on my way home. That was kind of what the early years of Prime were characterised for me. So how did your parents handle that? My very long-suffering mum. She was so wise and I think she knew that to try and and force me um, would be a mistake and it would end up making me hate school even more. She'd ask me, of course, like, it's time to go. But when I really, you know, dug my heels in, um, she would then spend the day with me and we would kind of recuperate and talk through what had happened the previous day and what was the particularly traumatic thing that had made me not want to go to school that day. And I think it was just that she had that idea of, you play the long game. You know, why we had come to Australia was that, you know, people of a Chinese ethnic background, as both of my parents are, in a place like Malaysia, which people from a Chinese background couldn't, for example, get a job with the government, couldn't ever own more than 49% of a business, couldn't get practically past certain levels of education. That's why they came to this land of opportunity. And so it was kind of like, this is why we're here. It's absolutely worth it, but you're going to have to stick through some tough times if you're going to get those benefits out of it. Okay. Let's talk about uh, your schoolwork. You didn't like maths. No, maths was not something I gravitated towards in any way. Even though I could do maths, I always found myself quite slow in mathematics and I much more gravitated towards things I could read, storytelling and characters. Um, So I was a real humanities geek at school. For how long? Oh, look, all the way through. So up until my HSC, um, you know, for my year 12 subjects, I took um, four units of English. So two two are compulsory. Three are what you do if you really love reading and four is what you do if you're slightly mad. So I did four units of English. I did three units of history, modern history plus extension. I did two units of drama. So that's that was my graduating certificate. That's what my pattern of study looked like. So all the way to the end of schooling, um, I fit very happily in that humanities niche. But you still did maths. I did. Yeah, absolutely. What I mean, what level of maths did you end up doing? So the level of maths I did was called Mathematics Extension 1. Like I didn't enjoy it, but I could do it. My memory was good enough that I could look at a formula, I could commit it to memory, and I was good enough generally at guessing um, the, from the cues in a question, which formula am I supposed to use here? <laughs> so I, I didn't have I didn't have what we'd call any deep conceptual understanding. The thing I now realise as a teacher the thing that really matters. So um, I did do the maths, but didn't really get it, if that makes sense. So you took yourself off to Sydney Uni. This is really a very strange thing to have happened. I can't imagine this happening, but I know it did. So I want you to tell this story. You're standing in this corridor. You think you're going to enrol in a humanities subject, but Mm. that's not what happens. Tell us how that unfolded. So as I mentioned, coming out of high school, because English and history were clearly my strong subject. So English and history was what was written on my enrolment form. And I was standing there in the line because this is back in the days before online enrolment. And this professor, he came up to me. He said hi, he greeted me. And then he, uh, you know, he looked at my enrollment form and he said, "Uh, look, I'm not going to force you to change your mind, but 
at least at the moment in New South Wales, we actually have plenty of English and history teachers, lots and lots of really good ones. Um, you know what we don't have? We don't have very many maths teachers. That's where the real dire need is. And he said, look, you've done a fair bit of maths, as you pointed out. I'd done it at school, even though I didn't enjoy it. He said, you've got enough of foundation to build on. Would you consider changing your degree? And for me, being a teacher was all about working with kids. It wasn't about a particular subject. Uh, So that's what sent me down this rabbit hole. But that's an extraordinary decision to make, I think. You were 18. Yes. To change your position on that and to decide to teach a subject that you didn't particularly enjoy. Mm. Well, I mean, I guess in in some ways you're right. It, on, on, on paper like that, it does sound a bit crazy. I wonder sometimes if people look at me and they're like, did you just tick the wrong box? You ended up in the wrong <laughs> place. Um, but I guess just coming back, the, the, the thing that motivated me to become a high school teacher in the first place is just that when you see a kid come in at age 12, you can fit them inside their bag. That's how little they are. <laughs> uh, and they're, they're, they're so needy and dependent. In my year seven class, I've got kids, they put up their hand for everything. They're like, sir, do we have to write a heading for this? Sir, do I draw this diagram? Do I? They need guidance on everything. That's what they're like when they enter. They leave. They're 18 years old. They're voting. They're ready to make decisions about the trajectory of their life and and contribute back to society as adults. That transformation, I find amazing. To watch it every time, it's a huge privilege to be a part of. So for me, what drew me toward teaching was not that I love a subject and I want to, you know, show people it's great. It was that involvement, that very personal journey that Mm. I get to contribute to. And so sort of in that light, you know, I mean, this sounds a bit weird, but if tomorrow they outlawed mathematics and they said, Eddie, you're not allowed to teach maths anymore. Yeah, I'd, I'd cry a little bit. I'd shed a tear, but I'd just go and find something else to teach because it's the kids that really motivate me and they're why I love what I do. We'd have WooTube English. Right. It would be a, a very different set of videos, <laughs> I think. So 2004, you mentioned it's the year that your mum died. So it's a very special year for you for a number of reasons. And this is the year that you've chosen as the year that made you. We all, we all know it's just, it's just a fact of life that we, we change and we grow and we develop as human beings, not on the sunny days, it's on the the dark days. That's when we are, are confronted with who we are and have to rise above what we were before. And, you know, I, as a, as a, the youngest of three, I'm I'm not going to lie. My mom certainly babied me and I was kind of typical spoiled, you know, my, I'm really embarrassed even to say this, but my mom made my lunch every single day that I went to school from kindy to year 12. It's like, come on kid, you should learn to do that yourself. (laughs) Right. And so when she passed away, I really had to grow up real fast. Um, in very quick succession after my mum passed away, my brother and sister, they both moved out. It was just my dad and I. It was kind of like bachelor pad 2.0 and we kind of had to make do. It pushed me to grow up fast and it also has given me a sense of understanding for what children go through. I, I think about the children I teach because of what I've gone through as a child, as a student myself. My mum was diagnosed with cancer when I was in year 10. I know in my classroom of 30 kids, I can guarantee there's three or four or five of them. They're going through the hardest period of their life and no one knows about it. Mm. I don't know about it. Their friends don't know about it. My mum was a very private person. And so she didn't want any of my friends uh, to know. Just a few people, a few teachers at my school knew what she was going through. She didn't want me to be the the kid whose mom has cancer. So I'd just, I'd either miss school because I was looking after, or I'd just turn up bags under my eyes because I was, you know, changing her oxygen tank throughout the night because it was lung cancer that she had. Um, But no one knew what was going on. I know, I I look at kids, I walk through the playground, I just look out across the faces and I know (laughs) at a school of 2,000 kids, you've got hundreds of these children going through an enormously difficult time and what they need is just someone to be beside them. So that's enormously shaped like the educator who I am today, the parent who I am today. Of course, that was the year when I, you know, went down the journey to become a mathematics teacher. And it's kind of arguably what sort of defines who I am to most people. Eddie Wu, it's been a delight to have you on the program today. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thanks, Liz. Thank you, Eddie. My pleasure.